Hi there everyone, welcome to Paul Painting with Ron. In today's video we're going to be doing another bloom painting. I'm having another go at one I had trouble with a couple of videos ago. Um, hopefully it'll work this time. Now space is at a bit of a premium today because I've just done another painting. Um, see the last video I think. Um, and it's busy drying on this side of my table. And it's quite a large canvas today. Now, if you recall, a few videos ago, I did a painting on this, this large canvas that was 40 centimetres by 80 centimetres. Now, it did turn out really well in the end, but I had a bit of trouble with the, the physics of how the paint was moving. It went really easily to the, the short edges, but I had a lot of trouble getting it to these long edges. Mayna forgot that... Uh, the further away the canvas is from the centre of the spinner, the faster it goes and the more force there is on the paint to pull it out to the edges. So all my paint went to the edges and hardly any went to the other side. So this way I'll, I'll change, this time I'll change it a little bit how I put my paint on the canvas and hopefully I won't have um, as much trouble as this time, last time. Now I'm not going to go through the whole recipe again but I will put some links at the end of this video that you can click on to see um, how you do this particular technique in great detail. I go through the complete recipe. It's not really that hard if you get all the bits right in preparation. Now the first thing I will need to do, of course, is choose my colours. Now today, just to change things up a bit, I'm using my black cell activator. So I just use the black Amsterdam paint, the black oxide, and mix that three one part paint to three parts Floetrol. So that's my black cell activator. And then the colours today are all Joe Sonia's colours. They're a nicely, highly pigmented colour. And I've just mixed them up with my pouring medium in these bottles. So there's the untinted house paint and the uh, Joe Sonia's gloss varnish. Um, the recipe, as I said, is in the other videos I'll put a link to. So I'm using some turquoise and some blue, purple, some red. And this lovely gold that I just got the just this last week. So all together with the black lacing, I think it should look really nice. Now, ideally, I'd want to use a black pillow paint as well. Um, if I can find some in the shop or work out how to do it, I'll do a black one and see if it looks if it looks any better. Because I really don't want the white to pop out too much, but it will when I stretch it out. If I use just black, I'll just have black with black lacing and the, the colours popping through, which I think will look a, a lot better. Not that this will look ugly, but I think a black pillow would look better. So I'll keep an eye out for it in Bunnings, and if I can find it, then I'll do one and I'll video that one as well. Now, before anything, I do anything else, I need some gloves, because this is messy. So I'll put on my trusty gloves. Now this technique uses lots of pillow paint. As you'll soon see, it looks a bit scary. But if you don't put enough on the canvas, you won't have enough to stretch out your colours on the top and you'll get stuck like I did last time. With my painting, you'll get all sorts of grief. All right, so I'll pour some paint on first. It's just the lotion interior wall paint, acrylic, white. Haven't done anything to it other than mix it. Oh, before I do, I'll move my camera, of course, so you can see what I'm doing. I almost forgot. No, I'm back. This is my oh, pillow paint, as I was saying. Now, I'll just pour some round about the centre and I'll spread it out and then I'll put the proper pillow on. Just put that somewhere. Over here. All right. 
I'll just spread it out over the canvas, a bit like decorating a cake. It'll just help the rest of the paint to slide once I start spinning. I'll do the edges as well. I really hope it works today. And that it will spin heavenly. Now I just use um, not a lazy Susan, a banding little, um, what do you call it, banding turntable thing, plastic turntable thing I got from the art store. But you can use a lazy Susan or a cake decorator, anything that spins nicely to spin your painting on. the top cover. We'll do the edges. I don't think British paints had paint pouring in mind when they made their paint. But whatever works. Now, if you're in America and you can't get the Joe Sonia's gloss varnish for your pouring medium, you, you can use polycrylic as well. It's a polyurethane too. Anything that's non-yellowing. Yes, and you mix that two parts of your polyurethane varnish to three parts of untinted wall paint to make your pouring medium and then you mix the pouring medium um, two parts pouring medium to uh, one part of your paint I think that's right check out my other videos anyway just to to make sure If the acrylic you use is really thick, you may need a bit more varnish to keep it um, reasonably thin. But you don't want it as thin as your cell activator. So it needs to be thinner than your pillow, but thicker than your cell activator for it to work. Now the Amsterdam colours tend to work the best for this technique as a cell activator. You may not get as good as cells if you use another brand of paint. You might find one that works, but everyone seems to swear by the Amsterdam brand. I've almost finished decorating my canvas. Okay, just smooth it out a little bit. It's very thick, so it's pretty hard to smooth anyway. Now, I'm this time I'm going to be pretending that it's actually a square canvas. So I'm going to ignore the ends. The physics will take the paint there. I'm going to imagine it's just a, a 40 by 40 square canvas when I put the pillow on. So I'll put it closer to those ends than these ends. Hopefully that will work. Well, that's the theory anyway. Okay. Ugh.
this is going to work this time. Let's put the lid on and put this away. Now, before I put the colour on, I'll give it a bit of a torch. Maybe a bit this way. Not quite the middle. Okay, right. Now, where are we going? All right, now I'll start off with my darker colors and put the lighter ones on the top. So I'll start off with purple, give it a bit of a shake. It does tend to separate a little bit if you let it let it stand. All right. Now where's the middle? Going much closer to the edge than I did last time. Now I like these drizzle ones. So that was about 40 grams of colour there. Uh, I'll do blue. And nice swirls. And then turquoise. And then I'll finish off with the gold. Now I might want most of my gold in the middle. So I'll play around a little bit with that when I put it on. I was contemplating putting green on, oh, yellow on, but then I get lots of green happening. And I didn't particularly want lots of green. Okay. Now the gold. Now I'll do a smaller rectangle. Gold in the middle. Okay. We'll see how that works. I think I'm right in the middle. Okay. Now, the cell activator, I'm going to put on 
this paint wall scraper thing. And then I'll use playing cards to apply it onto my canvas. Let's get my playing cards. Not super organized today, am I? Let's get a couple. Need another packet soon. I don't have space. So I'm just applying the Selectivator. Then I get a playing card. I'll use the wide edge. I just dip the edge in to get a nice covering. And then about the middle, I'll drag the colors out like so. Now it's going to go to that end anyway, so I'm not going to go right to the very end. Again here, the middle. Ooh, what will I do here? Start from the middle and go this way, I think. In the middle. Just wiping it off each time. Good. that looking a bit more cell activator again I'll go from the middle and just out like that Just a bit. We'll fix that in a little bit. Get another card. What can I use? I'll use the other side. harder doing it the other way. Time for a new card. Some more cell activator. I really hope it works this time. It's a, a lot of paint. Okay. Now we'll go from here. I'll go right to the edge this time.
Vulcan. I'll use the skinny edge. paranoid about these edges. Is that yeah, it's looking pretty? I just hope it spreads well this time. <gasps> Fingers crossed. Okay, now I'll just go and wash this up, and while I'm doing that, it gives time for the lacing to develop as much as it's going to, and then we'll put it on the spinner and see what happens. Be back soon. Okay, I'm back. Um, I think the lacing is going to look awesome once it's spun out. Fingers crossed that it actually gets to all the edges this time. We'll, we'll soon find out. Now, I'll just move my camera to the, the swimming pool. Oh, before I do, there's this horrible purple thing here. I'll just fix that. Oh, and I've washed all my black away. That'd be right. That's better. It'll just get huge. Okay, so this is my spinner. Nice big children's swimming pool. Um, and I've lined it with old plastic just to catch all the drips that fly off. I've upturned a bucket just to keep the um, canvas off the surface. Sometimes I have thick edge canvases and just putting it on the Lazy Susan, not quite tall enough. Now I've put this board on the top for larger canvases just to support the canvas a little bit better. Now you may notice a brown smudge over in that corner. That's a huntsman spider. Saw it there this morning. It's well and truly dead. It got stuck in the paint. Gave me a bit of a surprise when I was setting up the pool this morning, that's for sure. Anyway, I'll get my canvas and we'll start spinning. Here we go, dripping paint everywhere. Oh, some of these look really lovely. Okay, now the trick is to get it in the middle. I think that's the middle. I'll just do a little turn. I think that's right. Now, shall we spin and see what happens? You see the paint moves straight to the ends straight away. It's 
It moves to the ends immediately. Now watch that. I may have to pick it off and just stretch it manually to the corners a little bit. I may actually do that now. I'll pick it up. Just go there. There. straight to the ends. Oh, I'm covering my sides this time, which is good. Just a bit worried about that corner, but we'll see. luck than last time. success. Now I think everything's covered. I just may need to stretch it more to make the, the cells or the lacing bigger. Oh, that looks really awesome. Now you don't want to overdo it. That's right, I was going to wreck it. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Next time. Next time I was going to run a wire through it to create some interesting effects, but I'll do that next time. Ooh, that's lovely. I like the gold. Now, have we gone far enough, maybe? Or will I do another one? I don't want to... I don't want to ruin it. Mm, that, that is, that's very pretty. Don't you think? Let's have a look. leave it like that. That's awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it drip for a little bit and then put it on the table and tidy up the edges and then I'll bring you in for a closer look at it. So here is the, the painting. I, I hope you can see it. I'll just bring you in for a closer look. The colours are just lovely. See the lacing is beautiful. 
all the way to the very ends. The next time I do it, as I said, I'll, I'll run some wire through the painting before I spin it out, just to create some swirly effects rather than just the straight, the straight lines. Some very pretty, pretty lacing and color combinations happening. So I like bright. This is certainly bright. The gold, the gold will really sparkle once it dries. So what do you think? Pretty, isn't it? Yes, and there, there's certainly things I would do to it next time to make it even nicer. Um, I think it'd be a good idea to have a, a black pillow rather than a white one. The thing is, if you have air bubbles in your pillow paint and they pop, the colour of the pillow will shine through your painting. So I've got some, some lovely little white spots throughout my painting. If I used a black pillow, they wouldn't be as noticeable with the, the black lacing around the painting. So I'll give that a go next time if I can get some black house paint. Um, and as I said before too, I would probably wreck it by running a wire through it before I spread it. So I'm sure you'll see this sort of painting happening again with a few variations um, to see if we can get an even nicer looking painting. Well, I hope I've inspired you to give this technique a go. Um, as I said before, I'll put some links at the end of this one to take you to some other ones that I did where I go through the whole recipe and if you get the recipe right this technique is really quite simple to do. Um, I think that's all I was going to say. Um, yeah well if you liked what you saw today please take a moment to press the like button it helps other people find my content on YouTube and if you'd like to see more of my videos please take a moment to subscribe. So happy painting and we'll see you next time.